Some people might be surprised to hear that one of the most popular sports anime of the recent times actually also features dancing racehorses. Some people might also think that we're here to discuss if Uma Musume is a good anime or not, but these people are all wrong. Let's instead ask the question on everyone's lips, does liking racehorses make you a furry? And oh boy do I have some hot answers coming up for you, right now. Alright, so what's the strange new thing I've been getting into as of late? And the answer, naturally, is horse racing. Now that Uma Musume just announced an upcoming new animated project, it's the perfect time to look back at the franchise, and we're starting from the beginning. The ancient Babylon, where archaeological evidence points out, according to my strict analysis, to your pathetic little ancient ancestors gambling away all their money over horse girls. So essentially, nothing has changed. Also, as an totally innocent preface, let's also look at the history of bestiality. Various societies in history weren't exactly happy with people involving themselves with animals, and such cases were usually met with some extreme punishments. These punishments included, for example, hanging, burning to death, sometimes both subsequently. The punishments sometimes even applied to animals too who I can only imagine were somewhat confused when the medieval human court sentenced them to die. In yet another recorded moral panic, in 1735, a man named Francois Bornichet was imprisoned, and the court was very afraid that, quote, his infamous debauches may corrupt the young men. All in all, it's fair to say that even the lawmen of the past knew that young men are easily corrupted by horse girls, animalistic vials and other counterculture trends. But for the modern man, and especially to a mobile game developer, these young men also represent something else, a market audience. Nowadays we are happy to live in a liberal hippie utopia, where telling your disgusted family that you want to procreate with a horse is just in another way of exchanging Thanksgiving greetings. Because the modern world has now finally disturbed our societal fabric and collective spinal fluids, it was only a matter of time before someone saw both horse racing and the newest fad, spending money over JPEGs of anime girls, and decided to put the two together. And thus, say hello to Uma Musume. And by, putting the two together, I actually meant putting together a lonely rancher and a horse, because we're about to dive balls deep into the metaphysical question of what even is a horse girl. The deep Uma Musume lore is somewhat vague about this topic, which is hilarious, because meanwhile the series actively showcases the creators wondering how horse-human hybrids would affect for example the urban design. All in all I'm assuming that there was a very conscious choice to gloss over this, and I can only imagine how awkward some of the concept meetings in studio were. The staff has released some additional details in interviews though, but the tidbits, like how for example normal real horses do not exist in the world at all, only served to underline that the staff knows exactly what's what and was perfectly aware that literally everyone was going to be asking these questions. Now, putting the implications of horseless society aside, the explanation the series seems to roll with is that horse girls are reincarnations of real-world racehorses, effectively making the series an isekai, and that there seems to be some magical intervention involved in the horse burst. At this point, the question honestly isn't anymore where all the suspiciously absent fathers in this universe are, but what exactly is this cosmic holy horsepower that keeps seeding random women? These horse girls are then brought into the world, and they, according to narration, naturally strive to be the fastest racer to exist. In other words, the horse girls live an existential nightmare, where their destiny and self-worth is arbitrarily decided by an unknown cosmic force that randomly keeps molesting women. These horse girls are then poked at in trains as exotic attractions, and segregated into a special academy, where every teacher is compelled by law to look like a complete dork. Welcome to the horrible life of a horse girl. We hope you're at least a fast one, because otherwise you have literally no reason to exist. Now you might wonder what being an idol has to do with horse racing, and the honest answer is that I have no goddamn idea. If you figure out the answer, please tell me in the comments, or send me a polite letter, alongside a manifest on industrial society. 
But here's the twist. Uma Musume is insanely popular in Japan. And the surprising explanation to this being, the series is actually pretty fun. I'm going to be honest with you. I watched the first season when it aired, so my memories of the ancient year 2018 are somewhat vague, and I'm going to sideline it almost completely here, but we're regardless about to dive into the real beef here. For me, the franchise spotlight is easily taken by the second season, titled, Uma Musume 2. The Endless Fucking Teo Pain Train. Where the plot, spoilers, consists only out of the horses repeatedly breaking their goddamn legs. I knew the season was going to be good when I realized it only exists to give me a front seat to witnessing how the innocent hopes and dreams of these poor bastards are crushed by harsh reality. It's a season where most of the budget is spent on photo-realistic ugly crying faces and totally platonic girl-on-girl -girl dates. After watching the season, I seriously wondered who in their right mind would ever enjoy this entire masochistic roller coaster, only to promptly arrive to the conclusion that I'm literally the target audience. I'm enjoying it. This series, it was made for me. The intensity of the season is also helped by the fact that the main lead horse absolutely destroys the other protagonist competitors by being so superior character that it's almost unfair. Now, you might not agree with me, but that's ultimately irrelevant, as I've now made a video about the topic, which means my opinion is objectively better than yours. Don't like her personality? Too bad, you're objectively wrong. Don't like her screechy goblin voice? Objectively wrong. This is how arguments nowadays work. Get with the times old man. The secret component in this insane mix is the fact that these characters are based on real-life racehorses, which means that the entire dramatic structure of the series is heavily leaning on reality. This makes the races both unpredictable, but also absolutely cathartic in nature, as you know these poor bastards actually had to overcome the same difficulties in real life. You're essentially provided the best the sports world has to offer, and given a steep rabbit hole into the actual sport. What's that? After all my convincing, you still don't find horse racing exciting? That just means you never watched a Tokaiteo race. And what's that? You didn't enjoy the second season because it repeatedly kept kicking you in the balls? Alright. I get it, big guy. You're totally not crying over some dumb ass horse anime, so you can go home now with your fragile masculinity intact, and play with your fucking Legos. Probably the most infamous part of the franchise is the polite suggestion by the staff to stop looting the horses. There's been a lot of speculation why you exactly shouldn't draw nudes about the characters, but this almost likely has nothing to do with the complex ethical discourse over sexualization itself, but most likely with yet another set of commercial dimensions. The horse owners most likely wouldn't allow the franchise to use the real horses, if it would also mean that the first results from any search engine would feature an anime girl getting banged. Another running theory is that the horse owners themselves are actually cool with banging anime girls and all that, but the real nemesis is the Japan Racing Association, which sounds like the ultimate organized end boss for all the horse fuckers. I found this one YouTube comment which claims that Akihiro Honda, known to me as the guy who's behind the most mimetic Metal Gear songs, composed Umapyoi Densetsu, which is a song sounds like the anthem for insane people, entirely while drunk and dancing in his underwear, just to get on the same level with his target audience, and all the beast-like forest spirits he was channeling into flesh. This was such a good story that I'm just going to believe it, and refuse to do any further research, as harsh reality might actually just ruin the fun I'm having right now. Are you both into horses, and, people behind digital avatars, pretending to be horses? Then I have some lucky news for you, as a sort of a commercial for the anime, one of the horse girls, Goldship, has been producing VTuber content since 2018. 
The channel is actually quite popular, but just like Uma Musume in general, gets much less traction in the West. Maybe this is understandable though, as the competition is tough, and other organized gangs keep bathing in the blood of all the lesser VTubers. Now, after we've covered various facets of the Uma Musume franchise, it's time to circle back to the central question of this video, which, I'm now anticlimactically going to reveal, is actually pretty obvious and not that interesting. The answer to if enjoying horse girls makes you furry is actually a very solid no, as this peer-reviewed academic furry chart pretty clearly points out. According to the chart, and your common sense, it's not actually bestiality to like a girl that just has cute animal ears. As you can see, I did not make this video just to desperately convince myself over this fact. I'm doing this as a public service, so that all the horsemen out there can enjoy their hobby with heads held up high. So there you go. It's perfectly normal to want to have sex with a horse. Now get out there and make your parents proud. Oh, no, I'm back.